What up, YouTube? Webhead Mike here, and I finally began my 5e Archipelago campaign, and I began asking myself a question that any DM, regardless of your experience level, be you a greenhorn or a veteran, are my players engaged? Do I have a captive audience? Now, truth be told, it lies on you to world build effectively. So you, so you gotta think about geography, economy, um, culture, races, factions, deities, how do they all interact? How do some cooperate and others have conflict? Because again, this has to be an almost interactive environment that the players are going to affect. You know, like they'll send out their ripples and then there will be a reverb back. Almost like there is a history at work and a future history at work. Now, you don't have to be totally open sandbox, but you definitely don't want to railroad your players because nothing is going to irritate them more than thinking their actions have no consequence. I mean, if you really just want to tell a quick story, why don't you just sit us down and we'll open up some chips and talk? Another thing that helped them was I introduced the expert system. Now, because there's no universities as such, if you want to get good at something, you need a mentor. So, you would pick a profession and three proficiencies that would fall under your scope of practice. Now, these didn't have to be ones you were already proficient with. Now, you would just probably do a little bit better with them. But, mechanically, if you were thinking, hmm, there are things I'd like to work towards, so I'll pick a, f so I'll pick a few that I don't have so I can work towards those. Like for instance, if you wanted to be a carpenter, you would probably want to be good at nature, uh, architecture or engineering. That's not quite a thing in 5e, but there's always bonus proficiencies. And then finally, the craftsman tools, specifically carpenters. Now your character might not start out with those, but you can work towards those, especially as you go from apprentice, journeyman, craftsman, expert. And, and you'd have this pool of knowledge that would keep upgrading every time you graduated from one echelon to the next. Now, narratively, this also gave us a fertile ground to work with because in making a mentor, you have to, they're, 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 they would have to think about a personality, a dynamic, a relationship that I would also begin to influence and work with because you don't want to make it stale, like say, oh, just like Batman, but stop that, stop that nonsense. And some of the players gave me some really cool ideas, like one of them said, my guy was a castaway on a failed voyage. He was able to be washed up ashore by pure chance where he, where he saw this guy worshiping at his shrine, Keranos, the god of storms, and was very enamored by the god's example and perhaps saving him. So he, so he was going to be a cleric for him. Another guy had his uh, parents disappear one day, leaving only a code cylinder with him. That one day he would find and find the secrets to by unlocking and finding new clues to go and find them. Now that would be a now that's a mentor by proxy because he still has to think about how am I gonna decode this? How am I going to hit the proper combination to open this up and get my next clue? Well you're going to have to think about, are there any aphorisms or words of wisdoms my parents gave me? Hmm? Is there anything I can look at on the cylinder to give me a hint? Yeah. Yeah. So, and there's also the mystery of, why are my parents gone? Again, it gives him that foot out the door to go out and, and start his hero's journey. Another player of mine, I was I, 
I was initially worried that he wasn't going to integrate too well because the character he chose was a barbarian with a hermit background. I was a little worried that that wouldn't integrate too well. But he was invested in it because... Right now in game, this is the first time a proper voyage is, ha it is happening since a decade. So that got his interest. And it also turns out that the player himself just is extremely into nautical stuff. Now, I am too. I already should have been if I'm going to be making any voyage by sea happen. But... As of about a decade ago, I'm a certified sailor. Probably have to recertify, but that's an, but that's besides the point. It was so cool having him give all these exposés and explanations that I don't have to bother with now because he's explaining everything. Now, you don't want to have a Wizard of Oz situation where the man behind the curtain is seen and there's no mystery because that will also dispel this almost spiritual element of inhabiting the mind of someone else because because your character is not you right and I don't want to stop him because it's showing engagement he's giving a little bit of of a um expose he's giving he's giving is giving his bit of expository dialogue and freeing up my mind and I want to reward him but I can't just hand out inspiration and hero coins every time he can point out which is the starboard side, which is the port. Uh, but again, it's the duty of the DM to make sure the game flows well. And he does have bonuses coming. I, I'm just not going to say what. Because again, that would dispel some of the mystery. There are also other things that cool things that he picked up on, such as you know that bottle that's broken on the bow every time before a vessel goes out yonder. Well, that's actually that that's actually an, an, a, a that's actually a, that's actually a good omen. And truth be told, things they did led to a good outcome to start. Not going to say much more because, again, no man behind the curtain. <laughs> but I am very happy to see this going forward. I should probably now make an introductory video about the campaign, but that's a video for another day. I've already taken up enough time. I thank you for watching. If you have any comments, let me know down below. How are ways that you get engagement from your players? Am I missing anything, too? But hey, I thank you for watching this long. Please consider liking and subscribing. But until next time, Webhead Mike, out.